guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Make sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications. Now, I want to really talk about yesterday's game at Ainsley Park. I mean, the fairy tale of a defeat. Match Day Vlog is out right now. Make sure to go and like, subscribe, and check it out. Go and check out Ryan's YouTube channel. Yesterday's game at Ainsley Park, how can I really put that into a high definition of the atmosphere? The atmosphere was brilliant. You had mixed like half and half in the Livingston Ultras, you had Edinburgh City Ultras and Livingston Ultras. Now, I don't know why there was Edinburgh City Ultras even there. I don't even know. I'm like, Edinburgh City Ultras at the Spartans v Livingston game. Hmm. Rather strange because um, there was a few bits of troubles in that with the Ultras the Edinburgh City Ultras at Ainsley Park yesterday because uh, and it's the way Spartans is designed like the toilets is just like a big metal box like you know you get the big metal containers that's the bathrooms at Spartans that's all you get because that's just what the stadium looks like basically you could tell that the Ultras were in because in there because well the Spartans toilets have never been vandalised, they've never been graffitied on or anything like that. When you went in, you're like, you could just see people drawing on all the stuff and that, and you're like, well, why are you doing that? You know, it's it's not your club to come to a club and destroy it, you know, and then the poor Spartans workers had to go in and scrub and clean it, clean it all off, and it took them ages. Yeah. Spartans is a good football club, they don't even want to be wasting their time scrubbing and cleaning off people's uh, vandalism, it's just, it's not fair. Um, but there was a few troubles and that's that was all before kick-off. Spartans did deserve that, they're a good club. They show what they're worth and stuff like that and it's a really good atmosphere. And uh, the match attendance for yesterday was 600, I think. Talking on the performance for Spartans in the first half, chances, creating chances, Pressing up the field non-stop. Got to get that winner. And in the first half, they had a good few shots on target. But uh, the, they didn't get put away. To be honest, Livingston have a strong keeper. I'm not going to say anything about that. But the keeper done all they can to keep Spartan shots out. Which was a, a bit annoying because like a lot of the shots that Spartans took were very strong. Were very... And they were a very threatening side in the first half yesterday and most of the second half too. The question is, I did see where it went wrong because um, Spartans done all they can to try and fight and huff and puff and just try and really create the chances to get them through to the next round of the Scottish Challenge Cup. Nothing really came of it in the end, but um, Livingston at the same time, there was a few tackles that here and there that were a bit like not really needed, very meaty challenges and the challenges that weren't really needed. I know there was a few Spartans fans near me that were a bit unhappy with the linesman leading up to Livingston's first goal. Basically the reason a lot of people were shouting offside near me for the Livingston first goal was because if a player's on the wrong side of the defender or however it works these days because they keep changing it over and over and over and over again. It's just too many changes in Scottish football and you're like, well, surely if the player is on the wrong side of the defender at the wrong time, then you're basically looking at that and saying, well, that's offside. But the linesman's are way up where David Martindale is, right? And all the players are in the box ready to score the goal. What's the linesman doing? All you need to do, linesman, is put your flag up like that. Done. I'd say a linesman like that, that can do his job, is terrible. Like, I was watching him yesterday and I'm like, what am I watching here? What am I watching here? The linesman didn't even look like he could keep up with the field he played at all. He was just about out of breath by the time he got to where the manager sit at Spartans. You've got the tunnels, well, not really a tunnel because it's just... They curved fancy shelters and that. By the time he go for the corner flag up at the top end of the field to come all the way back down, he had to stop at the halfway line where the dugouts are at Spartans and he was on his, holding on to his knees and he was just like that. 
like panting like mad and then eventually before he could even get down to catch up with that goal that was meant to be offside it got counted and I'm like that, that shouldn't have counted no that should not have counted no because it shouldn't have because the player was about 10 yards offside you could see it for the way the fieldy play coming in for the Spartans defence when the Livingston players were hurdling about to try and score Stevie May was well offside because he was on the wrong side of the defender and you've seen it in the Scottish Premiership if the player's on the wrong side of the defender and he's far too early it goes too far it gets chopped off how can you not see that and don't get me wrong the referee as well as he would say the scandalous referee he it's a referee I've not really seen before but um, some of his decisions were very harsh the penalty decision yesterday um, Spartans player you could I could see the handball directly from where I was sitting it went straight the player's arm was out like that like that and if the player's arm is out and it hits the hand right away and you've got the Spartans players going handball handball and the referee's just like that as in play on are you kidding me stonewall penalty not just once but twice yesterday now when spartans were shooting up the way it wasn't even a handball it was blair henderson he got clipped and he just went a very nasty tackle for stevie may and he just went flying no 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 that's not a penalty the handball in the second half hits off uh, i can't remember the name of the livingston players name but hits off his hand stone war you could see it hit the hand his hand wasn't at his waist if his hands at his waist doesn't count as a penalty but when it's out like that and it goes boing it's a penalty everybody in the premiership knows that if it hits there it's a penalty spartans crash out the spfl trust trophy which is the scottish challenge cup where the scottish championship Scottish League 1 and League 2, Lowland League and Highland League, I think, as well. I think playing it, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's just the three Scottish Leagues now. I think they've changed it because it keeps changing every season and there's a lot of the changes in Scottish football these days, but there's not really much you can say about that because when they change it, they change it. Just think, why is there so many changes nowadays? Why is there so much that's changing that's non-negotiable the reason Livingston won is because they got a helping hand and David Martindale the amount of shouting and bawling that he can do on the touchline bloody hell from where I was sitting you could hear him he's a nice manager don't get me wrong because uh, I met him yesterday he's a nice manager but you can see how passionate he is about his job how much he wants to bring to Livingston and uh, his dream is to actually get Livingston to the final of the Scottish Challenge Cup. I wish him luck on that, because if he does, there's one trophy for Livingston, if possible. Only I don't know what teams will be up next for Livingston, but if Livingston can progress in the Challenge Cup, they've got something to look forward to. They've still got the Scottish Cup as well, they've still got the Scottish Championship title. If David Martindale can achieve getting Livingston back up at first choice, then that's fair enough. Because looking at Livingston, they're not the same side that were struggling in a relegation dogfight that ended up getting automatic relegation last season. They're a totally different side. They're different. They've rebuilt the team. There's like, it's a whole brand new team. Like a whole brand new team. Like, barely unrecognisable. There's still a few players that I still know that are in that team, like Kelly and a few others that I know that are still there. But it's a different team because they, they were very busy in their summer rebuild. Has it worked? Yes, because they started okay in the championship. They've done well um, yesterday. Like You can see what David Martindale's trying to do. He's changed the formation in a different way that it's really fight and 
there's a lot of aggression and threat in that Livingston side that's been rebuilt by David Martindale. And that's what you want to see if he wants to get Livingston to a cup final of the Challenge Cup, then I wish him luck because he knows what he's doing. Th that's my honesty right here for a Hibs fan, Spartans fan, whatever. He knows what he's doing and Livingston fans are really nice fans. Uh, it's a nice ground. Not the best playing surfaces, but it's a nice ground, to be honest. If David Martindale achieves what he wants to do for Livingston, then I wish him luck. I honestly do. And if they do end up winning the league or come up through the playoffs, then there's still stuff there. There's a long way to go and there's still a lot for Livingston fans to look forward to. Fans, uh, well done for showing up in their numbers and basically they create a good atmosphere as well because the stand over, because I was sitting in the stand where the Spartans ultras are, but if you look over to the stand over on the other end, that was just all Livingston fans. So it was like all the Livingston fans that sit in the main stand at Livingston were all there. So it is a big fan base. People might say, oh, it's small. It's not as big. It's actually a big fan base. When you see it in person, the Spartans, they filled that stand away over the other side. It was full. A, the Livingston colours, yellow and black. So, I mean, the colours of Livingston are quite nice as well because it's the same. Livingston have the same colours as uh, Barossi or Dortmund. So, uh, same colours, same style, uh, same fashion, if you will. If you look at Spartans, they've got their traditional colours, red and white. Uh, because there's four teams in Scotland that wear red and white. Aberdeen, Spartans, Hamilton, Airdrieonians. Four. That's the colours. Um, so, there's your history facts, guys, uh, about basically how many teams in Scotland wear red and white. The four teams are there, Spartans, Hamilton, Airdrieonians, and Aberdeen. So, there you go. They're all there. So, that's my history lessons for the day, guys. But anyway... That has been your host once again, guys, Jack C99. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, enable notifications, subscribe to Ryan, uh, who's trying to get to 1K subscribers, help him out. There's his channel there. Yes, guys, so uh, he was the one that actually won the giveaway at Spartans yesterday, the Spartans scarf and Spartans pin badge. In supportive comment for Ryan, because today's notification shout-outs goes to Ryan. So they're there. So that's the notification shout-outs for today and I'll give notification shout-outs. That's going to be a new thing I'm going to try and do in the videos as much as possible. Hey okay, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, enable notifications and thank you to Ryan for actually saying subscribe to Jack C99, help him get to 1K. Really appreciative. That has been your host, Jack C99 and I will catch you guys in the very next video.